Hello again everyone. In this video let's take a look at the Toyota approved method for repairing damaged wiring and terminals. Now to do this video we're going to take a 2021 Camry. And let's say that we have some damaged wire on some of the engine control components. So we're going to get to the EWD. Let's say that we've got an A25A engine. And in particular, the wiring that is damaged is going from the ECM to this connector right here. Just as an example. Let's zoom in. Okay, so it's going to the connector CA3 and it's terminal 6. So let's click on that connector. Looks like it's a white connector. There's its part number right there. And let's say that it's that, ter that terminal 6, that light green wire going into it. Now, this is a new function of the EWD, where when you click on a terminal, it will give you additional information concerning color and any other sort of remarks. It looks like in this case where we have a light green wire they say that we could have other possibilities depending on the model. Okay so since we have a broken wire let's go ahead and take a look at how we would repair this situation. Now when it comes to wires or terminals this method is going to be exactly the same. So where I have my cursor right now is over the wire harness repair section of the EWD. I click on that. Another new function of the EWD is that they offer these GIF videos concerning the proper method to go ahead and depend the terminals from those given connectors. So starting at the information, let's say that we've got ourselves a 1.5 diameter terminal. Now this is the name and the way to identify different types of terminals. Notice up above we had 0.642 terminals, but let's go with the 1.5. Now all the information to go ahead and make the repair is there. Now if I had wiring specifically that I was repairing, I would look for the same gauge. But let's say we've got a terminal that's damaged in this situation. Right here is the part number for a replacement terminal. That terminal will come with the metal terminal itself as well as a piece of wires on the other end for the repair. Also needed for this repair is going to be a sleeve. Now Toyota recommends crimping, not soldering. There's too many ways that we can damage wiring by soldering. So Toyota goes with the crimp method. So in this case, we are going to have a, have a sleeve that is of the S size, and there's the part number for it right there. Now, let's check out the procedure for doing this repair. In this section of the, of the EWD, we have listed all sorts of different tools for removing terminals. Now, to this point, Toyota has usually just had one lance canceling tool. However, uh, some insider information, all of these ones listed are going to eventually be available through our tool ordering website. Uh, although we only have one at this point, you should have these crimping uh, pliers as well in your red toolboxes. Okay, moving forward. Now, we were saying that we had the 1.5 terminal size uh, that, that we're dealing with specifically. Uh, so, when it comes to selecting the correct sleeve, which we already know we're going to be dealing with an S size terminal, there is the, the, the type that we're looking for, and here is the legend that shows exactly what the size of the wire is going to be. So, here we see that the wire is measured 
and then we see the correlating size with the size of crimp terminal. Okay, moving along. Let's get to the actual repair. Okay, step three, replacing the terminal. So, as we can see in the illustration right here, this is how a new terminal would be coming from Toyota at the parts distribution center. Now, after we've determined which terminal uh, repair uh, sleeve that we would be using, here's the sizes and there's the part numbers for them specifically. We know we're going after the S terminal. They say that we need to go ahead and remove some of the insulation anywhere from 8 to 11 millimeters in depth. Now they give us some precautions some good examples of, of the insulation stripped away. And then they also give us some bad examples of the insulation being stripped away. Make sure you do it properly. From there, we will enter both sides, both with the replacement terminal and the wire to be repaired, into both sides. Then using the proper pliers, we will crimp them And then afterwards, we will put shrink tube over them. Okay, so let's do this procedure. Here's the tools needed for the job. To the left, we see both of the crimp pliers. Again, remember those are in the red toolboxes. Drawers 20 and 17. Right beside them are some replacement crimp sleeves. Also some shrink tubing. As we move to the right, we can see that we have our insulation strippers. Also with that, we have a heat gun to, to uh, shrink the shrink tube, and then an extra package of our crimp sleeves. Here's an example of the Lance terminal tool needed to remove that 1.5 style terminal from its connector. Okay, using our wire strippers, let's go ahead and cut eight to 11 millimeters in depth. Using the correct size for the stripper, we gently squeeze, and then I like to give it a twist, and then gently remove the insulation. Look like the picture? Let's check the diameter of our wire just to make sure we're using the correct crimp sleeve. Being very careful not to squeeze the wire too tight, we are going to measure out just about one millimeter. The S type sleeve is the correct one. So based on the S type sleeve, we're going to need the small pliers to crimp this. Measuring up, it looks like the smallest one is too small. Looks like the next one down is just right. I'm going to lightly put pressure on this to hold it in place and center the sleeve in the middle of the pliers. Okay, let's get to the repair. Now, don't forget this part. Always put your heat shrink onto the wire first before you crimp it. I'm going to open up the pliers. Put my S-type crimp sleeve in, just as we said before. And that will help anchor it while I insert the wire. Now that 8 to 11 millimeters will make it so I have no coppers coming out the back of the sleeve. One side done, nice and secure. Now I'm going to install the pliers on the other side of the crimp sleeve. Inserting the other side now, I crimp it down. Both sides secure. Okay, let's put the shrink tube on. Be sure to take your shrink tube and slide it right in the middle of your brand new crimp sleeve. Turn on your heat gun and be sure to go all the way around the shrink tube to where it's shrunk in every spot. 
in the entire diameter. Once done, both ends where the shrink tube makes contact with the insulation should be completely closed tight. Let's see how I did. I didn't do a very good job of keeping that shrink tube right in the center. However, the important thing is, is that the shrink tube is completely tight against the insulation on both sides. Notice that the crimp sleeve and the wiring together is not that much larger in diameter than it was originally. Okay, so let's have a summary. First of all, Toyota does not support soldering wires. Crimping method is the only way that Toyota approves. Then, use the EWD to know how to remove a terminal from a connector. Also utilize the EWD to determine correct crimp sleeve, terminal part number, and crimp pliers needed to perform the repair. Be careful not to damage wires when stripping the insulation. Use my twist method. It helps a lot. And be sure the shrink tube is completely sealing against the insulation on the ends so that we don't have any moisture getting in to your repair. That's it. Thanks so much for watching.